Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reading a lost episode creepypasta. Call it Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids Smiling. This creepypasta was suggested by Jeremiah McDermott. Thank you, Jeremiah, for the suggestion. I appreciate it greatly and I really enjoyed reading this lost episode creepypasta. And for anybody else, if you have any suggestions for creepypastas or SCPs you would like me to read, let me know in the comments down below. If I read your suggestion, I'll give you a shout out in the next video. So again, thank you Jeremiah for the suggestion, I appreciate it greatly. When I was a child, I used to watch a show called it the Adventures of Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids. The show is currently one of the longest running cartoon shows in history and is famous for teaching young children life lessons. I loved the show and watched it every day. However, by the age of 13 I stopped watching the TV show. I am now grown up and living in an apartment in New York. One day I was browsing around the internet. I found a site that was selling episodes of Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids. I scrolled it through and saw that they had the whole collection. Naturally, like most people my age, I bought the collection to relive my childhood. I received an entire DVD collection in the mail of all of the seasons. Oddly enough though, there was one that I received that was on a VHS. I did some research on the internet and what I got was a few posts discussing an episode of Fat Albert that aired for only a few minutes. According to the fans, the episode was just beginning to start up, but then right as the theme began to play, the show cut to static and an announcement was made on CBS, the channel that Fat Albert originally aired, that tonight's episode of Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids was cancelled and another episode was played instead. Upon realization of this, I became excited not only because I now have the complete collection of my favorite show that I loved as a kid, but I also have some rare unreleased episode. I decided to play the episode titled Smiling first. I got out my old VHS player and plugged it into the TV and put the VHS in. I was greeted by a black screen which just said in bold red letters. Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, smiling. From there it then cut to a picture of a mouse smiling with all Japanese text above it. There was a rip in the screen that covered most of the three symbols. Thankfully, I texted a friend who spoke Japanese and he was able to tell me. Using the parts of the symbols that weren't cut off, what they were and translated it for me. He said it translated out to, smiling as the mask of the suffering. It was an odd way to begin and it unnerved me for some reason. Now before I mention the theme, I need to mention that a lot of the intro was cut out and only the, the scenes I mentioned are in it. The main theme began to play except something was wrong. The song was lower and slower down making it sound depressed and ominous. Even weirder is the scene where Bill Cosby was supposed to be on a stage dancing around during the theme. He wasn't there. It was just an empty background. It then cut to the scene where Albert's friends are supposed to be carrying him, but instead it was just a picture of Albert lying on the ground and footsteps leading off screen in the direction that they were carrying Albert. But what really stood out was that there were scratch markings leading in the opposite direction of the footprints. From what I could gather, I believe that the boys saw something and ran away. However, one of the boys wasn't able to get away fast enough and it grabbed him and dragged him away. The intro then cut to the junkyard and it was abandoned and empty. It showed the instruments the Cosby kids used for music. The instruments were lying on the ground, mangled and broken. I could have sworn that on the end of one of the instruments I saw a bit of blood as if someone had used it as a weapon and hit someone. The intro finally ended and I was quite shocked at some of the imagery I saw but I had continued watching the episode. 
The episode showed the Cosby kids and Albert playing in the junkyard. Rudy began talking about how he had heard about a new girl moving into a home nearby. Rudy went on to say, I've heard from kids who have spoken to her tell me that she is really weird. We shouldn't hang out with her. Albert then replied, Just because she is different doesn't mean we shouldn't hang out with her. Before Albert and Rudy could finish the conversation, the school bell rang. Albert and the gang then hurried to school. When they arrived, they ran into the new girl. The gang introduced themselves and said, Hello. The new girl replied in a sad, depressed tone, Hello, I'm Daisy. Albert then asked her if she wanted to walk to class with them. Daisy then said, Okay, I guess so. As they walked it, Albert asked what had her so down and Daisy replied, I just feel sad. I never had many friends. I've always been secluded and everything just has a meaningless feeling to it. Albert then replied saying, But it's not Daisy. Everything you do has meaning and life is what you make out of it. And when you finally realize that, you will smile and be glad I told you. Daisy then said, Okay then. After school, Daisy and Albert were walking, then they eventually encountered Rudy lighting a joint with his special lighter that he carries around. Albert became furious and warned Rudy that drugs can do things to him and make him go insane. However, Rudy brushes off what Albert said and continued. The next day, Rudy got into trouble after having an outburst and attacking a fellow classmate and beating him into near unconsciousness. Events like this continued over the course of three days until Albert couldn't take it anymore. He decided he would tell the school facility that he was doing drugs and to see if he could get Rudy any help. However, school was already over and Albert decided that he would wait till tomorrow to tell the school facility. However, as Albert was walking to school, a scream bellowed from Rudy's house. Albert rushed to the door and tried to open it, but it was locked. Albert quickly went home and called the police. After a few minutes, Officer Gomez and the other policemen arrived at the house. They went inside only to find Rudy's parents sitting at the dinner table, dead, with their heads lying against the table and Rudy nowhere to be found. The police did an investigation of the bodies and concluded that they were poisoned. Eventually, Daisy arrived and was in terror when she saw the sight. The police began to look around the house and Albert and Daisy decided to help and found a ventilation shaft rip it open and assumed that whoever kidnapped Rudy escaped through the ventilation shaft with him. Around 10 p.m., two days after Rudy's disappearance, Albert sees something outside his window in the dark. Rudy standing in a dark corner staring at him. Albert ran out to see him, but Rudy ran off. The following day, Daisy was nowhere to be found, and after three days of absence, the police put out a search. Some neighbors stated they witnessed what looked like a kidnapping the night of Daisy's disappearance. The witness claimed they saw what looked like Rudy with a sadistic smile on his face, carrying something in a large sack away from Daisy's house. Albert then thought to himself, It's those drugs. They are messing with Rudy's mind and making him do all of these terrible things. He wasn't kidnapped. He killed his parents and climbed out the ventilation shaft. The show then cut to a live action Bill Cosby murmuring to himself, It will not get my smile. It will not get my smile. It will not get my smile. Bill eventually became more aggressive and began yelling and pacing around the set like a madman. It then cuts back to the cartoon and shows Officer Gomez driving a car. His tires eventually burst from rolling across broken glass shards from what looks like a smashed beer bottle. Officer Gomez's car crashed into a wall. He crawled it out and revealed it that he had twisted his legs and was immobile. 
Rudy then appears out of a nearby alley and starts beating Officer Gomez until he is unconscious and then drags his body off into the alley. Live action Bill Cosby then appears on the screen and was beating himself to near death with a baseball bat repeating, I will not have my smile, over and over and over. His face was swollen and he was losing an insane amount of blood. One of the stagehands eventually came out to help him, but he struck him down with the baseball bat and then Bill Cosby continued to beat himself with the baseball bat until he was dead. He then cut back into the cartoon and showed Albert sitting and reading the newspaper. He sees in the newspaper that Officer Gomez disappeared last night and his patrol car was found two blocks down from where Albert lived. Albert decided to go out and investigate. He went to the spot where Officer Gomez's car was found. He walked around the area for an entire hour searching for clues. Albert eventually found what he was looking for. It barely caught his eye, but he saw it in a nearby alley, glistening in a very thin stretch of light that just barely reached the alley, what looked like a few drops of blood. He went over to the alley and found several drops of blood leading further into the alley. What Albert found at the end of the alley was shocking. It was a severed hand. The hand had several small puncture wounds in it as if a syringe had been stuck into it and the blood had been drained from it almost as if a vampire had bit it several times. Albert then tried to open the door that was right behind the severed hand but it was blocked off by some object. Albert then called the police. The police arrived and took the hand as evidence and did an investigation of the alley. They found nothing else but the drops of blood and the hand. The hand was eventually confirmed to be Officer Gomez's hand. Albert was in shock from the, that day and he suspected that Rudy was behind it all. Albert got the remaining gang together and decided that they would look for Rudy to confront him. They searched and searched but found nothing. However, after a few hours of searching, Russell got bored and wandered off. The rest of the gang noticed this and went looking for him. They eventually found Russell standing in an alley, staring at Rudy. Rudy then grabbed Russell and ran off with him, and had a huge grin on his face. They followed Rudy without him noticing and Rudy led them to a warehouse. Albert decided that the gang should stay out here and wait. The rest of the gang thought he was crazy, but Albert wanted to see if he could talk some sense into Rudy. Albert entered the warehouse and saw Rudy standing across from Rudy facing in the opposite direction. Standing in the middle of the length between Albert and Rudy was Russell, just standing there. Albert then yelled, Russell, get over here before Rudy hurts you. Rudy then turned it around and pointed a desk lamp towards Russell. The light revealed that it was simply a dummy. Albert had been fooled. Albert then yelled, Rudy, don't you see what you're doing? You're hurting people. You need to turn yourself in. Rudy did not respond, but instead he turned around. His eyes were darkened at holes and he had just a big smile on his face. Rudy then stood aside to reveal a body hanging behind him. The body was hanging upside down from the ceiling and its face was skinned, showing only an under layer of muscle and tissue. The body was also wearing Rudy's clothing. This confused Albert because the Rudy that had done all of these things was also wearing the same clothes. However, he didn't have to wait too long before the answer was revealed. Dark-eyed Rudy grabbed his face and pulled it off like a mask, revealing that it was Daisy behind all of it. Albert stood, dumbfounded, and in terror at what he saw. Suddenly it all made sense. It wasn't Rudy that was doing this. It was Daisy running around with similar clothing and wearing his face like a mask. Albert then said, Why are you doing this, Daisy? 
Daisy replied, "Because Albert, I could never smile, but now I can to the faces of other people." Albert then replied, "But what about Officer Gomez's hand in the alley? It looked like it had several puncture wounds." Daisy then said, "Why don't I show you?" She shined the desk lamp light on another hanging body. This one was wearing a police officer uniform and was also skinned. It was no doubt that was Officer Gomez's body. Not only because it had a police officer outfit on, but because it was missing a hand. She pulled down his police shirt, revealing his stomach, and it revealed that his entire body was covered in puncture wounds from what looked like needles. Daisy then said. I eventually began to feel sad again, even though I was wearing a smile. So I decided that I would drain the blood and stomach acid from the people I collected. What I do with the blood and stomach acid is I take it to a friend I know, and he makes it into a smokable drug. The drug makes me feel happy, but I'm still not able to smile from it. So I wear the smile and use the drug to make me feel happy. I will have a smile if I keep them both. Albert replied sharply, "But why did you cut off Officer Gomez's hand in the first place?" Daisy replied in a manical manner. He tried to grab me by the throat with his hand, so I cut it off. I didn't want to waste the blood in his hand, so I took a syringe and a jar I had and drained the blood from his hand into the jar. Daisy then laughed and said, "However, that's not important." What is is the fact that you are the happiest person I know, and thus I need your smile. Daisy then pulled out a large knife covered in blood. The blood glistened in the light from the moon, shining through the crack of the ceiling. This sight made Albert sick. Albert ran from the door, but Daisy got to it before him, locked it, and swallowed the key. Albert then said, "No." You won't have my smile, and you'll never take anyone else's smile ever again. Albert then ran for some old gasoline cans, which he spotted, and picked one of them up and poured it on Daisy. It got into her eyes, and she screamed and began rubbing her eyes. Daisy eventually rubbed it off her eyes and was able to see again. She then charged it with her knife, ready to skin him. Albert then remembered the lighter that Rudy. Always carried around, which he last used for smoking the drugs that his friends had given him. Albert ran for Rudy's body and reached into his pocket and was relieved to see his lighter in his pocket. Albert then turned around and lit the lighter. Daisy stopped and looked at Albert, and before she could run away, Albert said, "Hey, hey, hey! It's time to play." Albert tossed the lighter at Daisy, and she was ignited. She ran around the room, screaming as she burned it. She eventually fell onto the other gasoline cans, causing a large explosion of fire. The fire grew and began to engulf the building. Eventually, it covered almost the entire warehouse, and the boys saw the light from the fire inside and the smoke coming from the door. They tried to get it open by kicking and ramming it, but nothing worked. And eventually, the place burned down with Albert in it. The police and fire department arrived and found Albert half dead, and buried in large amounts of rubble. They managed to pull him out and put him on a stretcher and roll him off into an ambulance. Albert then looked up and saw a charred body holding the knife that Daisy tried to use to kill him. He assumed that was Daisy. He also saw that Russell was back with the rest of the gang. Albert then put his head back down and rested, knowing that they had found Russell and ended Daisy. They then loaded Albert into the ambulance and drove off. The episode then ended and cut to a static shot of Daisy wearing Ruby's face. This went on for a whole minute, and I felt as if Daisy was staring at me through the screen. The episode then cut to black. I just know that she'll be back.